Hey guys, we've mentioned on some previous videos on the Healthcare in Japan playlist about medication in Japan and medicines and drugs in general in Japan as far as healthcare is concerned and that raised questions from different people saying what about my medication for this and my medication for that and we actually do get a lot of messages from people sending us messages and asking us, you know, I have this condition, I need this medicine, uh, how will that be in Japan? Will I be able to bring that to Japan? We haven't made a video about this because as you'll see, it's, it's typically complicated, uh, as, as a lot of things in Japan are. It's typically, typically complicated. And to get clear answers on any of this stuff is really difficult. So, firstly, just an overview. Uh, the rules about, the laws about medicine in Japan are really strict. Uh, usually most medicines in Japan are pretty weak and a lot of the medicines that are available over the counter in a lot of other countries are illegal in Japan. Uh, medicines like um, cold tablets, cold codral cold tablets and VIX inhalers are illegal in Japan for whatever reason but the, the VIX inhaler that people often use when they've got a, a cold uh, are illegal here. Uh, anything with a stimulant in it or, or an ephedrine in it so if you've got some cold medicine medication that's got pseudoephedrine in it or something like that, a lot of those are, are legal as well. So there's a huge, there's a huge uh, number of, of drugs that aren't, aren't allowed here that are, are freely available over the counter in a lot of other countries. So it's very strict. The way it works is, so we have to remember that those ones are illegal. So the ones that are illegal are illegal. You can't bring them here. But other prescription medications you can bring here, if you bring your prescription with you, a copy of your prescription with you, you can bring a month's supply of prescription medicine if you bring a copy of your prescription and uh, clearly, you know, so either on the bottle itself, your name and details and everything and instructions on how many to take or a letter from the doctor that's really clear. It has to be really clear because this is going to be read by the customs people at, at the port of entry. So probably at the airport when you come in, they'll want to be able to understand that clearly and, uh, and understand exactly what the drug is. Um, so that's for prescription ones. So you can bring a month's supply if you've got that prescription with you, or you can bring um, two months' supply of non-prescription medication so you know heartburn tablets or you know the sort of stuff that, you, that are freely available over the counter here as well so it's sort of simple stuff like antacids and things like that you can bring two months supply and this extends to uh, to inhalers and uh, machines so not drugs but machines themselves like um, oxygen machines and things like that as well uh, and that's something to do with, with customs tax as well. It's, it's, it's really complicated. It really is complicated. What we're actually going to do is there's one of the members of our forum, the japanchannel.com forum, is pretty switched on about this sort of stuff. She's lived here forever and uh, she's got lots of information about it and she sort of uses a few things herself for her health. So she's sort of been switched on. So she started a thread now I'll put a link underneath this video and we'll be able to update that from time to time as different information comes to hand or as rules change. But what we'd say to you is this, is if you have any doubt at all about what you need to bring, if you've got a prescription medicine that you want to bring to Japan or you've got any sort of medicine at all that you want to bring to Japan, we would recommend that you contact your consulate or your embassy in wherever it is that you live contact them, the Japanese consulate or the Japanese embassy, and tell them exactly what you've got. I've got this. If you have to actually go there at any time to do with your visa or anything else, take your medicine with you and show them and say, I've got this. We have to treat this extremely seriously because there are stories of people coming here with over-the-counter medicines like codrils and things like that in quantity and ended up being, ending up being detained and you can be detained here for a really long time and there's a couple of embassies that warn about this and say that compassionate grounds are not are not taken into consideration when the, go the Japanese government look at this sort of thing so that's a really delicate way of them a diplomatic way of them saying that the Japanese will give you no mercy 
you know, if you say you didn't know or, you know, whatever else, there's a good chance they won't care. And if you've brought something in that's illegal in Japan and you've brought, a, you know, you've brought a couple of months supply or something that you could end up in a lot of trouble, you could end up detained. So you've got to treat it really seriously. So the, we'll, we'll give you what information we can in the link underneath this video so that we'll, we'll put what information we can. And in that link will be some other links to to get what's called a Yakan Shomei, which is if you do want to come for six months and you want to bring six months worth of important medication, then you have to get this document, this Yakan Shomei. And to get that, you have to provide a whole heap of documents from your doctor and from uh, fill out a whole heap of forms and complete a whole heap of information and then you give that to your embassy or your consulate in your country before you come and then if it's all okay they'll give you a certificate this Yakan Shome and that that certificate will cover you so if you have to do that for for each drug that you've got so if you've got some special drug that you have to take for your whatever your medical condition is and and it's a drug that's legal in Japan it, again if any of the if your drug happens to be illegal in Japan you just can't bring it it's as simple as that so if it's a drug that you can bring, you complete all these, this documentation, get all this information from your doctor and from everybody else, take it to your Japanese consulate and give it to them, and they'll process it and then they'll give you a certificate. And then, then when you turn up here at the airport, you'll have the certificate and the drugs, and you give them both to the customs guy, they can look at it and say, okay, you've got six months of this stuff, here's your certificate saying you're allowed to do this, okay, off you go, no problem at all. So. It's typical of the way the, the Japanese bureaucracy works. None of this is clear. You know, it would, it would be the best thing in the world if there was just one website page that just listed every drug that's available in other countries that's banned in Japan. It would probably save the Japanese government a lot of time if they just give us a big list of what's, what's not allowed here, but they don't do that. So there's, there's some lists that have been made up on, around the internet, including one on our forum but there's no definitive list so it's a case by case what they do on the on the website on the on the government website japanese government website is give you a phone number to call so that's that's their way of dealing with this is that everybody has to, that has, everybody that's in doubt has to call this phone number and ask what about this what about this what about this so you can see why we haven't made a video about it you know it's 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 typical of the, the Japanese bureaucracy works like this. Instead of streamlining everything and making it all black and white and clear so that everybody, everybody extend, understands clearly what the rules are and what's allowed and what's not, they, they leave it full of grey areas and mysteries and you have to go and you know, talk to people and get forms and so it's typical. So, so we'd suggest First of all, if your medication isn't really that important, if you can live without it, whatever it is, you're probably better off just living without it because whatever it is, it's going to be a pain to get in here with it. Uh, and if it's something that's available here, if you're coming for a period of time, you know, if you're coming for a year or two, unless it's something that you can't live without, you're better off just going without it. And then when you get here, go to a doctor here and see if you can get it here, whatever it is, if it's not a, if it's not a big major one. Um, if it's something that you can't live without, that you absolutely have to have, then you're going to have to jump through these hoops. You have to first of all contact the consulate or the or the or the or the embassy and find out if it is legal in Japan. And then if it's legal in Japan, then you have to jump through the hoops and get this certificate with all this information on it. It's going to be the only way. And if it's something that you can't live without and it's illegal in Japan, it's the news is not good. Um, unless you can come up with a legal alternative that is allowed in Japan, um, you, you don't know what you'd do. If it's something you can't live without and it's not allowed in Japan, you'd be in a real dilemma. The only, only solution would be to, to, to find out if there's a, 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 an alternative that is, is available here. So, And I'd suggest that a lot of the things that are popular in, in a lot of modern societies now as far as you know mood altering drugs and that sort of thing that people take for their various anxieties and things I think you probably find most of those sort of things aren't you know anything with a stimulant in it isn't, isn't well most 
Most drugs with stimulants in it aren't allowed here. So a lot of those things that people love, you know, in their societies to, to take all the time to make themselves feel better about the world. So, there it is. There's your options. Go without it or check with the embassy and, and see if it is definitely allowed and then jump through the hoops and get the certificate. So we'll put the information that we've got to hand so far. There's, there'll be a link under this video. Just click that link and it'll go to that page. And then we'll update that from time to time when we get more information or if things change or whatever else we can give you. But you'll see it's, it's all grey. It's all grey. The only real way is to check with them and actually get something in black and white confirming that whatever you've got is okay, you know. So, sorry it wasn't clear. You can see why we haven't made the video before. Things like this are frustrating here. It's a bit similar to the immigration thing with the visas. You know, there's lists, but there's always grey areas in Japanese bureaucracy. It's just the way it works. Just the way it is. So, anyway, I hope at least we'll be able to help people a little bit with this. That's why we made this video, so. More videos coming soon.